Cheap Arse Smartphones. That's the name of this video. Um, I've never spent more than $200 on a phone, but I've never been on contracts either. I generally just use cheap plans, like $35 a month, with very, very limited uh, small data plan. Um, I generally don't need data. I've got Wi-Fi at home. I've got Wi-Fi at work. Um, so it's very rare that I need data. So I've got a cheap $35 a month plan with a tiny amount of data. And uh, I've always just bought my phones straight up, not been on contracts with the more expensive plans. Uh, my first smartphone was a LG, I think it was called the P500. It was uh, tiny by today's standards. I don't remember the size of the screen, but it was uh, hilariously tiny by today's standards. And, you know, it was a single core processor. It probably had 512 uh, megabytes of RAM. And it was running Android version 2.3 Gingerbread. I remember that. Um, so I used that for a few years. And then um, my second smartphone was a Samsung Galaxy S2X. That was a very strange model. It was a Canadian exclusive, I believe, to one specific carrier. So it was one of those phones that was like a carrier exclusive. Um, so not a lot of people have heard of it or seen it. Um, I sometimes just called it the Samsung Galaxy S 2.5 because that's basically what it was. Um, it came out, I think, after the S3 as kind of a budget alternative. Um, but it's basically the processor from the S2 with like the bigger screen of the S3. And uh, it was uh, one gig of RAM and it was Android 4.4, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly. Um, decent camera, so much better camera, much, much better camera than the LG, but in retrospect, again, it was your first smartphone. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Samsung Galaxy S2 was a, a decent little phone, and I think I got that on sale, um, it was like Boxing Day or something, um, and it was $150. And again, this was after the S3 came out, but the S3 was probably like three times the price. Um, so this was a budget alternative, and it was on sale, and so I bought that, and it was an amazing phone at the time. It was definitely a big step up uh, from the uh, LG, uh, and it was, a it was a fair step up from most of the other um, budget uh, phones. Uh, so after that, I bought a used uh, Nexus 5. Uh, the Nexus 5 was made by LG, and I don't remember very much about that phone. I didn't have it for very long. Um, Again, I bought it used for $60, so incredibly cheap at the time, and I needed a phone, um, but it was an all-plastic body, and it was very, very brittle. The plastic was starting to crack basically all around the whole phone, and the back uh, panel, like you snapped on the back panel to cover the battery compartment, um, and that was like cracked and kind of didn't really uh, stay on tightly um, so it always kind of looked like it was coming off um, it was an okay phone I think it was probably like Android 6 and so it was an upgrade um, but I didn't have it very long the guy that I bought it off of ended up wanting it back he, his brother needed a phone or something and he bought it off me for $60 so no loss there. I paid $60 for it, used it for a little while. Wasn't huge on it and ended up selling it back to the guy I bought it off of for the same price I paid for it. And that's when this came into the picture, the Nexus 6. This is the Google Nexus 6. Well, the Nexus was kind of Google's own line before the like Pixel. So this is kind of like the predecessor to the Pixel, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, the Nexus 6 was made by Motorola as you can see, it's got the Motorola logo on the damn thing. <laughs> and this was a, a, a big up, upgrade from the well, the LG. It was an upgrade from the LG. It was a big upgrade from the S2X for sure. Um, this is a 6-inch screen. I think it's like 5.9 inches or 5.95 inches. It's basically 6 inches. And um, it's an OLED screen. It's 1440p, uh, 2560 by 1440. So it's a 6-inch screen that's in the 16 by 9 ratio, which um, they called it a phablet. It makes for a very large phone to hold in your hand. It's very wide. Um, it's very hard to reach the far left of the screen, even at the bottom of the screen. 
uh, even with my hands. So if you have smaller hands, yeah, it's a pretty big bone to hold on to. There's a reason all the phones basically at this time or after, shortly afterwards, started to go to a like a taller ratio. Um, but yeah, this is a, a six inch screen, basically uh, 1440p, and it's an OLED screen. And I do love the OLED screen. It's a beautiful screen on this thing. I think that's the my favorite thing about this phone is the screen. Um, the specs are pretty good. It's uh, this. By the way, this phone came out in 2015. Okay, and so my coworker bought the phone when it came out probably paid like $650 for it or something like that and used it for two years um, and then so 2017 I guess he sold it to me for a hundred and twenty dollars Canadian a hundred and twenty dollars basically the deal of a lifetime I had that LG at the time I'm like I don't really need a phone but this is like such an amazing deal I'm not like loving the LG um, guy wants to buy it back off of me this is it like it was perfect it was the, literally the deal of a lifetime $120 for this phone that just two years ago was like 650 plus um yeah so it's got great specs it's a quad core um snapdragon i think it's a 803 804 snap i can't remember that these damn when it comes to ARM processors, this is not like x86 or the Intel and AMD. It's easy to remember most of the models for the most part. When it comes to all these ARM processors and the Snapdragons, the numbers don't even make sense to me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a quad core with a fairly high clock speed. Like it's advertised as 2.7 gigahertz. I assume that's a burst, but holy cow, still. This thing has a pretty high clock speed on it. But three gigs of RAM, um, which now we're getting into higher end phones for me um this is uh three gigs of ram but it's only 32 gigs of storage and it doesn't have an sd card slot um the only other real downside my only other real complaint with this phone for me was the camera was really slow like hit the shutter and wait three seconds if you're trying to take a picture of an animal it's almost impossible because the thing is going to move by the time you know, you hit the shutter, and by the time it actually takes the picture, the animal has moved. That was kind of annoying, so that was a complaint. The camera was decent, though, I found. I thought, anyways, when I got this phone, no complaints with the quality of the, the, the photos it took or the video that it takes. Um, it's also stock, obviously, being a Google phone, a Nexus, um, it's stock vanilla Android. And I really like that. I like, you know, swipe to the left in the Google cards, and I like the the center icon for the um, the Go the uh, app tray, and just like swiping down and all the the settings and where all the settings are and how it's all laid out. I really got used to stock Android, and I do like the stock Android. This is Android version uh, seven point one. Uh, when I got the phone, I believe it was Android six. And uh, at some point in the two years that I had the phone, I think it was early, pretty early on, uh, it did get an upgrade to Android 7.1. So that's what it's running. It's running Android 7.1. Um, again, overall, I really like this uh, phone. It's fast enough for me. Uh, I'm a light user, by the way. I don't do a lot of multitasking. I don't play games on my phone. I'm a fairly light user, so this phone is fast enough. The battery life is good enough. I mean, obviously, a 1440p OLED screen is going to chew up the batteries. Um, but because I'm such a light user, I don't multitask a lot. I don't have Bluetooth on. I usually don't have um, GPS on. Uh, I keep the brightness at about half most of the time. I was getting a day and a half <laughs> battery life. If I, if I forgot to charge the phone overnight, I could usually get through half of a day the next day before I had to charge it um, so that was good enough um, but like overall I really liked the phone um, except for basically its issue was um, it randomly just started shutting off <laughs> so over the last um, three or four months it's been randomly just shutting off it doesn't even say shutting down it was literally it's like you pulled the plug on a desktop boom black screen it's off 
Um, and it tends to do it when I'm looking at the Google Cards and, or when I have the camera going. So a lot of times I'd be trying to take pictures of things and um, the, the phone would just shut off. So very annoying. I had to basically get rid of it. And that's what I did. I got rid of it and I got this. Um, so this is the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 Pro, I believe. I got the name right there. Um, obviously, Xiaomi, big manufacturer of phones in China. Redmi is Xiaomi's budget division. So this is a this is definitely a budget phone. Uh, everything about it is a budget phone, including the price I paid for it, by the way. Which, again, this video is called Cheap R Smartphones. I said I don't pay more than $200 or have never paid more than $200 for a phone. This one's no exception. This was $199 brand new in a retail store in the box unlocked no contract straight up bought this phone brand new for 199 so yeah it's a budget phone um but it's also got three years on the nexus 6 so the nexus 6 was a 650 plus dollar phone when it came out um this thing was like probably $200 America, $200 US when it launched. Came out in 2018, if I didn't mention that, I just think I did, and that it had uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah, three years on the Nexus 6. So it's like a third the price of the Nexus 6, <laughs> but it's three years newer, so I figured it's got three years of, you know, advancements uh, in terms of uh, being able to make budget phones pretty well. And honestly, this thing is good specs. It's four gigs of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of storage but it has a micro sd card so i've got my 32 gig micro sd card filled with music popped back in here um it's a six inch screen again i think it's like 5.9 inches or 5.99 i think it's actually in the in the specs i think it's actually 5.99 inches it's hilarious like it's it's basically six inches again um, but it's that wider or taller, depending how you're looking at it, ratio. It's not 16 by 9. It's like 17 or 18 by 9. I think it's 2160 by 1080. So it's basically 1080p at a slightly wider um, than 16 by 9 resolution. So I think, again, it comes out to like 2160 by 1080 instead of 1920 by 1080. That's not an OLED screen, unfortunately. Uh, I do miss that OLED screen. The screen's beautiful on that Nexus 6. This is an IPS screen. IPS screens are pretty decent, but they're not as good as OLED, and I can definitely tell the difference. Obviously, with an OLED, you expect really good blacks, good like um, shadows, good details. Uh, if you're watching a movie with a dark scene, detail in the, in the dark areas of a scene, you expect that's where the OLED's going to shine, and of course it does. But even just like a white screen with black text on it, there was something about that OLED that I liked a little bit more. But that said, this thing has insane battery life. This is a, a 4000, I believe. Yeah, I'm just going to go with it. I'm pretty sure it's a 4000 milliamp hour battery. It's a put, pretty big battery in a phone with a 1080p IPS screen on it. So where I was getting about a day and a half on the uh, Nexus 6, I'm getting like three days off of this thing. Now, again, that's not like hours and hours of screen on time every day watching like YouTube or Netflix. But again, I'm a light user, not multitasking, don't have Bluetooth on, don't have GPS on. But nonetheless, the battery life is basically twice as good as the Nexus 6. I didn't charge this phone last night. So I didn't charge it last night, and we're still at, like, whatever we're at right now, 55% or something. <laughs> so, again, it'll go three days of my uh, light use, which is amazing. The battery life is really good on this phone. Um, it does have a headphone jack. The cameras are decent. They're definitely not any better than the Nexus 6. I don't think, like, on paper they are. It's dual lens on the back. Um... And I think the megapixel rating is higher, and they advertise that it's AI-driven and all this stuff. But honestly, I don't think it's any better looking than the Nexus 6. But it is faster. You hit the shutter, and it's pretty quick taking a picture. So that is nice. Um, I believe it's dual lens front and back. And there's even a flash on the front, or at least an LED light for 
illuminating yourself when you're doing selfies. Um, phones these days, you know, sometimes taking selfies is more important <laughs> than taking actual scenic photographs or something. Um, but yeah, it's a good looking phone. I mean, I actually like the blue color, that anodized aluminum look that it's got going on on the back and, um, you know, white on the front, blue on the, on the back. It's a good looking phone. It's four gigs of Ram. Um, it's a Snapdragon 636 or something like that. It's an octa-core 14 nanometer. I only remember that because it was advertised on the screen when I took it out of the box. It had the the plastic over the screen with some of the specs on it. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's uh, faster than the Nexus 6. And in some ways it's better. In some ways it's not. Like, the battery life's better, but I'm, the OLED screen was better on the uh, Nexus 6. Um, this has more storage and an SD card. Um, but the Nexus 6 was, like, stock Android, and this had... Um, like this is like a Xiaomi UI, MI UI or something on top of it. Um, and, uh, you know, just some of the settings and menus are a little bit different. I really didn't like the way the icons looked. I actually changed uh, all the icons to look like the stock Google icons. So uh, I can show a picture of that. I got like uh, uh, what the icons look like and how I changed them. Uh, so that looks better. It looks more like stock Android. Um, but overall, I like the phone quite a lot. And actually, it just goes to show that like, if you're not a power user, again, I don't play games on phones. Um, and uh, I do very little multitasking. I kind of just do one thing at a time. And I, I've always consciously, <laughs> consciously closed everything when I'm not using it. Uh, a little less on this one with four gigs of RAM. I mean, you can do a fair bit of multitasking on it without slowing it down. And... Uh, but it just goes to show you, like two hundred dollars Canadian, like what's that? A hundred and fifty dollars U.S. can get you a pretty decent phone these days, and that's just my whole point. For a lot of people, we we don't need to spend a thousand dollars on a phone. You know, phones have gotten crazy expensive. The iPhone X and the uh, Samsung Galaxy S10. You spec those things out, they're well over a thousand dollars. And you know, the, the Pixel 3 is a thousand dollars. I know they just came out with a new one, it's like the Pixel 3a, $550 or something. That looks like an awesome phone for the price. And you get the wicked camera there. The Pixel 3's got a great camera on it. You know, these flagship phones have awesome cameras on them. The camera on this is like, eh, I don't think it's any better than the Nexus 6. And the Nexus 6 was considered like good but not great <laughs> even when it came out so yeah the cameras can obviously get a lot better on those more expensive phones but other than that for what i'm doing ah, man this thing basically does everything i need and so yeah that's it see you guys later